Welcome, everybody, to Chapter 12, in which I will teach you guys about radicals, the reactions of alkanes. You know, now that we're no longer in the late 1980s or early 1990s, I honestly feel like we don't use the word radical enough. I promise you that by the time this chapter is over, we'll have used it so much that you'll be sick of it. After this lecture, you should be able to predict the products and know the mechanisms of radical chlorination and bromination of alkanes. Predict the products and know the mechanism of radical addition of HBr to alkenes. And predict the products and know the mechanism of radical bromination of allyl and benzyl radicals. And you should note that we will skip section 12.6 from our text. I hope you're as excited as I am. Let's begin. By teaching you the addition of X2, where X is either chlorine or bromine, to alkanes. Now, alkanes are generally very unreactive compounds because they only have strong sigma bonds and atoms with no partial charges. That is, carbon-hydrogen and carbon-carbon bonds don't really have large significant differences in electronegativity one from another. Hence, they're very, very nonpolar. And that's why alkanes are more or less very unreactive using traditional organic synthetic reactions. However, one reaction that they can do is they can react with chlorine, Cl2, or bromine, Br2, in circumstances when they're catalyzed by light, which is abbreviated H nu. This is actually supposed to be the Greek letter nu, and the only font type that I have allows me to put the letter V in here in italics, as seen here. I can take, for example, methane, which under normal circumstances doesn't undergo organic reactions very easily, and treat it with chlorine gas, lighter heat, and replace one of the hydrogen atoms with a chlorine atom. Similarly, I can take ethane gas and treat it with bromine and lighter heat, and replace one of the hydrogens also with a bromine. How in the world does this happen? Well, I'll give you a hint. It involves a reaction mechanism that's totally radical. Before we get into that, I want to remind you something I taught you in an earlier lecture, the difference between double barbed and single barbed arrows in organic reaction mechanisms. Here's the type of reaction mechanism we've traditionally seen to this point. I have an arrow moving from atom A toward atom B that has two barbs on the end of it. That means that the two electrons that are being shared here by atoms A and B are all moving completely onto B, which thereby forms a B minus and an A plus. This type of movement of electrons, in which I have a double barbed arrow, represents the movement of two electrons. This is called heterolytic bond cleavage. By comparison, if I have my bond between A and B splitting in this manner, where I have a single barbed arrow going to both A and going to B separate, then what that means is that both A and B are each taking one of those two electrons in their bond and walking away with it, giving me A that has a single unpaired electron and B that has a single unpaired electron. These type of substances, molecules or atoms that have a single unpaired electrons, are called radicals. And this type of movement of electrons, in which one electron goes up onto one individual atom, is called homolytic bond cleavage. Thus we see that heterolytic bond cleavage, the only kind I've taught you so far, shows the movement of two electrons, and homolytic bond cleavage shows the movement of one electron. Once again, one electron reactions are called radical reactions. With that as background, I can now show you the mechanism by which radical chlorination and bromination of alkanes proceeds. Here's what happens. If I've got chlorine gas and I treat it with light or heat, I can get these two individual chlorine atoms to undergo radical or homolytic bond cleavage in which each of them takes one of these two electrons to itself. That thereby gives me two chlorine radical atoms, that is, two chlorines that each have one unpaired electron. At this point, one of those chlorines can form a bond with a hydrogen in an alkane, such as methane shown here, in a radical 
mechanism. What's happening is the hydrogen is momentarily stealing one of these two electrons, while the carbon is stealing the other. The hydrogen with its one electron comes in here and forms a bond with this chlorine with its one electron, plugging the hole so that they each feel like their nearest noble gas. This then releases this carbon that has a single unpaired electron on it as a methyl radical. At this point, this methyl radical will combine with a second molecule of chlorine gas, radically. Once again, this means that each of these two chlorine atoms is stealing momentarily to itself one of the two electrons in this bond. This chlorine, when it steals its one electron, walks over here and combines it with the one electron of this carbon to form a carbon-chlorine single bond, giving me this molecule, methyl chloride. Of course, in this process, this second chlorine atom is released in this form, that is, having an unpaired electron. This is chlorine radical. Now I need to mention a couple of things. This very first step in which the chlorine gas separated initially to form radicals is called the initiation step. The reason is because this is where the formation of our very first radicals begins or initiates. By comparison, each of these steps are collectively called propagation steps. And the reason is because we're taking a radical, in this case a chlorine radical, and we're doing a bunch of things that out the other end still form another radical. We haven't gotten rid of radicals. All we're doing is kicking the can down the road or propagating that radical onto other atoms. So how in the world do we get rid of the radicals? Well, you might remember that in this initiation step up here, there were actually two atoms of chlorine radical formed. One of them ended up getting incorporated into this HCl to form a methyl radical, which then combined with a second atom of chlorine radical to form methyl chloride, and spit out this chlorine radical here. What will happen is the other of these two chlorine radicals up here will now combine with the chlorine radical generated here to form Cl2, as shown here. Similarly, any excess methyl radicals that are lying around can also get together radically to form ethane, as indicated here. Other side reactions can also occur to remove radicals and ultimately form non-radical species, such as chlorine ra radicals getting together with methyl radicals to form our methyl chlorine product that we've already seen up here. All of these types of reactions are called termination steps because they're all getting rid of the radicals. You'll notice that we have radicals here on the left side of the equation. We all end up with non-radical species on the right. Something else interestingly that can happen is I can have my chlorine radical get together with my methyl chlorine product and abstract one of its hydrogens to form HCl and a methyl chloride radical. That radical can then go on to combine with another molecule of chlorine to now form methyl dichloride that has two halogens on it. We'll pay some closer attention to this later on.